Okay, welcome back everybody. Today I've got this 2014 GMC Sierra 3500. It has a check engine light on and also went into the emissions countdown. So the countdown before it'll go into like a 103 kilometer an hour limp mode. So we're gonna scan it, see what's going on there and see what the light is. So yeah, as we can see, we have our check engine light on and 128 kilometers until you go to the 105 kilometer max speed. So that is the first stage of limp mode when you have a emissions fault. So we scan the truck and we have a P2032, exhaust gas temperature sensor two, circuit low voltage. Now we gotta find where sensor two is because there's four EGT sensors on here. So we gotta find where the second one is and check the wiring, ohm it out and um, compare it to a new sensor. If we can find a spec on what the, the resistance of it should be, then I'll, I can we can go by, I can go by the spec on it. But if it can't, then you just basically compare them to another one that you know is good. And if it's way different, then we'll replace the sensor. And then on here, we can see by the data, one of these things is not like the others. So EGT sensor two is reading negative. All the other ones are reading between third 28 and 21. So number two is definitely having some problems. I mean, it's cold outside, but when it's outside, it was reading minus 40. And it's not that cold, especially for an EGT sensor that is in the exhaust. So right up there is EGT sensor number two. It is the one right behind the converter. Uh, number three is up in there on top of the DPF in the middle of it. And then number four is right here on the back of the DPF filter. Number one is up in the downpipe. Okay, so found the information you needed and they actually do give you a resistance value for checking the sensor. This here is the connector. It just has a tab on the top that that you push down and hold both ends and pull and it pops out so you see the two wires there and then you take the multimeter so the resistance should be around 220 ohms so you take your multimeter set it to the ohm setting and so sit right up in here take your leads I got these little little back probing uh, pins. They work really nice. They got an alligator clamp on the one end and a needle on the other end. So what you'll do is, they're also skinny enough to fit right in connectors. So this one has 112 ohms. Um, so the resistance is actually low in it should be about 220 so now we got that now we'll check our wiring so what you'll do is you'll take this connector here you have to go key on engine off so turn the key on to the run position so then it's going to be sending voltage down here and then um, I'll walk you through how to check the how to check the voltage and what the spec should be so once you have the sensor unplugged, um, one pin should have five volts on it, coming from the ECM. The other pin should be ground. So in this case, if you just take, the, take your one lead, put it on the one pin, take your other lead, and then put it on the ground. If it has five volts and making a good ground, we should see five volts on the multimeter. Now I should add here that if you don't have 5 volts, then you need to do a little further diagnostics. So you'd go from one pin to battery ground, and that would see if there's 5 volts on the circuit coming from the ECM. And then you'd do a resistance test from the other pin that is not 5 volts to battery ground and see what the resistance is. If it's high resistance, then you have a break in the wire. So we have five volts here. So that tells us that it has good power and good ground. So it looks like the sensor has low resistance. 
So the, uh, the sensor is probably messed up inside and not reading properly. But in order to verify that, I have the new sensor here. I always use the, um, I always use the OEM Delco, just right from the dealer. I've had bad luck with aftermarket sensors um, and not reading properly. So, once we have the new one out, or the package, same deal, you just clip on your alligator clamp probe onto the end of your test lead. Do the same thing to the ground side of the test lead and ohm it out. And yeah, there, the new sensor is 214 ohms. So the old sensor was 112, I believe. The new one's 214, right around the 220 area where it should be. So this sensor's gone. So now we gotta change that. So since we're replacing the sensor anyway, um, I like to just cut the connector off, a pair of side cutters, just cut the wire off, and then you can get right on it with a nice deep socket, and you're not using a wrench, you're not using a crow's foot, um, so you can get a good bite on it, and hopefully, hopefully it'll come out with not much, uh, not much resistance. This vehicle is a 2014, so it's pretty new, so it should come out relatively easily. Um, but I have had them before where the nut will break off in the hole. So then you have to pull the converter and the converter pipe out, undo it at the flange, take the down pipe off and pull this whole piece out and drill and tap it. So I got my 3H drive ratchet with the 17 millimeter deep socket. Fits right on. Like so, and then hopefully, there we go. Came right out. So there we go. We got the old one out. Now, we'll put a little bit of Never Seize on the threads of the new one and put it in. For that, you have to use a wrench because you can't get a socket on it because of the wire. But if you have the sensor sockets, then you can do it that way, but a wrench will work pretty much just as well when you install it. All right, so there we go. We got it all coated up and never seized. And now we just gotta thread it in. Put a little dielectrical grease on the connector, and we're good to go. I'll tighten up, pop this clamp open to hold the wire, in there, shut that, a little dielectric grease on the connector, helps it make good contact and keep the moisture out, and then plug it in. And away we go. I'm gonna zip tie and zip tie that up so it's up out of the way. Tighten it up. Side cutters. Cut the end off. And then away we go. New sensors in. Cords all fastened up. And zip tied to the center cross member. So now, so now we'll go back in the truck with a scanner and see what the sensor is reading now. It should be reading whatever atmospheric temperature is or pretty close to what the other ones are reading and we'll scan it, clear the codes, take it for a test drive and see how the new sensor is. And hopefully it'll go out of the limp mode and the uh, countdown will shut off. So yeah, pretty easy, pretty straightforward to change. You just unscrew them and check your wiring and yeah own them out and away you go
so now we can see our EGT sensor 2 is reading right along with the rest of them. Uh, reason number one is hotter is because it's up by the engine, so the engine will hold more heat and inside the engine compartment. So, yeah, now we got to take it for a test drive and see if everything's all good. The check engine light is off, but now there is a def uh, fluid code and it's still in the warning but that is most likely because the system hasn't been working for a while since the check engine light tripped on with the EGT codes and so now I just got to drive it and probably perform like um, reductant fluid quality check and then that should clear right out or it may even clear out taking it on a test drive so there we go after driving maybe a minute down the road uh, the deaf system light and the warning is gone and my EGT sensor is reading how it should. The reason the other two are lower by quite a bit is because they're downstream more. One's in the middle of the DPF and one is on the uh, output side of the DPF. So it takes a little while for them to heat up. But yeah, looks like we got it working again and we are out of a limp mode. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found this video informative and informational. And I hope it helps you get rid of some EGT problems on your own vehicle. Um, for all four sensors, the wiring is basically the same and the resistance is the same as well. So you can use these steps for any of the four EGT sensors on the truck. Thank you and we will see you on the next one.